So yesterday at PAX West, Ashes of Creation made some pretty big announcements during their panel regarding the game's upcoming Alpha 1 Phase 1, as well as showing us a new gameplay trailer that gives us a preview of the game's Castle Sieges, Horde mode and further progress with the action combat side of things. One of the biggest announcements yesterday, however, was that after around 4 months of Alpha 1 testing, everyone that has an account on the Ashes of Creation website will be invited to stress test the game for free for a while. Apparently they want to hit the the servers as hard as possible and get a lot of data for balancing purposes. If you haven't created an account for Ashes on the website yet and want to support my channel, then I have a referral link to the website in the description below. Also, after I released my last Ashes video, it came out that my.com will be publishing the game in Europe, which understandably has a lot of you guys concerned. I'm currently working on a full detailed video on this topic that explains how publishing deals work and giving my opinion on the whole situation. Long story short though, it's only a licensing agreement Intrepid have with my.com, which means legally that the publisher can't add anything into the game, change the business model, or do anything that would make it pay to win. They act more as a service provider more than anything, so I wouldn't panic too much. But if you're still not convinced, just wait for my more in-depth video on the topic. With that said, let's take a look at the new trailer that was shown at PAX yesterday.
Well, that was quite the hype trailer, wasn't it? Apparently, all of the characters seen in the video are being controlled by the devs and was recorded in one day. My favourite part was the scene where the players are facing the castle and you can see all of the trebuchet shots flying through the sky. I asked Stephen for more information on this and the trebs are firing actual projectiles that, when they land, cause AoE damage to players and structures. Also, since the last combat video, we've learned that our characters will have three hitboxes. One for lower body, one for upper upper body and one for the head. This means if you shoot someone in the head with an arrow, it will deal more damage than the other two areas, which certainly heightens the game's skill cap. Another thing to be aware of is that in the full MMO version of the game, the time to kill will be a lot longer than it is in the trailers. The reason it seems so short currently is that they're using the same game mode settings that will be used for their Battle Royale game type that we'll be testing in Alpha 1 Phase 1. As you can see currently, it plays out a lot more like a Twitch-based shooter than a traditional MMO, with the combat being projectile based and not soft targeting like Terra for example. This shooter feel also has a lot to do with the fact that they don't have class kits implemented yet. In this mode, abilities are tied to the weapons and armor that characters have picked up, and due to them wanting to focus on the action combat testing, there's no tab targeted abilities in this mode yet. As I mentioned in my previous video, the final combat system will have both tab targeting and action combat. Players can choose to augment their skills to favour action combat more or tab targeting more based on their preference. And I believe the way they will balance this is by making action abilities deal more damage due to them not being a guaranteed hit, as well as dodge roll being an iframe that if correctly timed allows tab targeted abilities to be dodged. It's also possible that using tab target abilities will always aim for a player's upper body hitbox, which would remove the chance of them dealing bonus damage from headshots, but that's just my speculation. Something else that can be seen in the trailer is a preview of the Horde mode, which is another game type we'll soon be testing in Alpha 1. This mode splits players into two teams. One team is the Horde side and allows players to control monsters and attack a city, and the other team consists of 50 players as defenders. Apparently there'll be multiple objectives that must be defended and attacked. After each wave it becomes harder to defend, with boss monsters eventually being able to be controlled, and after each wave players can collect loot and upgrade their gear to deal with the increasing difficulty level. It's quite an interesting idea for a PvPvE game type that I've never seen done in an MMO before. Hopefully it turns out to be fun. Other notable things we got to see from the trailer was some kind of coordinated mass cloaking ability which made a group of players invisible, animations for both one-handed and two-handed mace basic attacks, some kind of purple confusion or snare ability, an arrow that can be fired that turns into quite a large wall, an arrow that essentially shoots a black hole that temporarily sucks players in, some more Harry Potter Avada Kedavra goodness, and my personal favourite, the ability to turn into a bush. The final thing you'll notice about this trailer is that we can see an early preview of some UI elements. I doubt all of this will make it into the full version of the game, but from what we can see so far there's four different resources. Strength, mana, stamina, and possibly some kind of active block, with the big red bar in the middle representing player health. Above the resource bar it seems like the game displays how much of a resource is consumed when you use certain abilities. To the right of the resource bar we can see that in this game mode every class has three abilities. I'm assuming these are the ones tied to your weapons and armor in the battle royale mode, as well as left and right click also serving the purpose of light and heavy basic attacks. Other than that we can see a fixed map in the top right of the screen as well as a compass at the top of the screen. When it comes to the castle siege mode that was teased, this is something that we're supposed to be testing in December this year. It will be a 100 vs 100 defenders vs attackers mode with a destructible castle, siege weapons, multiple objectives to defend and attack, the ability to queue of up to 20 guild members, and the introduction of class kits and the holy trinity. Other than the trailer, Intrepid mentioned in the panel that there's currently over 100 people working on the game, and they hope to grow to 200 people by the end of the year, which is quite crazy considering it's already the biggest MMO project in development. They also said in Alpha 1 they want to wreck the servers as much as possible to push the limits of the player numbers in castle sieges. They're aiming to have destructible buildings working in Alpha 1 when 
when a building is destroyed, all of the furniture and the things inside of it will also be destroyed. They spoke about how in an MMORPG they feel it's important to have a huge amount of options when it comes to armor, clothing and fashion. They want it to be obvious who's a high level and who's a low level, but not make the low level sets look too beaten up due to our characters already being heroes when they enter the world. Apparently, as of right now, they have over 5,000 cosmetic combinations and expect to hit 1 million possible combinations when the game launches. It was also announced that they plan to add the player housing suite and character customization into the game during Alpha 1 Phase 1's Horde mode testing. Apparently, we'll be able to save our homes and characters in the Alpha and use them for the full release. They also mentioned that when testing the Battle Royale game mode, players could earn cosmetics that would carry over into the full release of the game. Apparently, this mode also allows players to place buildings such as watchtowers as well. And finally, it was announced that Alpha 1 Phase 2 is expected at the start of the second quarter of 2019 and will be a more traditional MMO Alpha that tests the game's core features as a whole, such as persistent world, node leveling, character progression, dungeons, class kits, and the merging of action combat and tab targeting combat. I think that pretty much covers the majority of what was announced about Ashes of Creation yesterday. It seems like development's still going really fast and in a few weeks I can actually try the game firsthand. Before we end this video though, I want to show you some clips that I enjoyed from yesterday's live stream, where Steven talks about how pay to win has been killing the genre and how it can be dangerous for studios to show things that are too early in development. I think this is something that pretty much every indie Kickstarter MMO can relate to. You don't see stuff like that usually from studios because it's dangerous. It, it literally is dangerous because in the studios, they're looking at it like, look what we've accomplished in this short period of time. This took a few weeks or a month or something. We got combat we working. We got combat working, right? And, working. And excited. And let's show the community the progress. And the community's like, no, this, <laughs> this looks like crap. D game dead on arrival. <laughs> you know, so it's like, they don't understand, you know, generally what the process is because typically studios don't show the process. They show a final product a month out from beta and then hype, hype, marketing, marketing, and go. And then it's a flash fire. The sheer support for a subscription-based, non-pay-to-win MMORPG is huge. And we are really excited about that because this is the direction we feel that the genre should be moving in. And I think we've turned some heads for some notable companies, some large publishers towards this direction away from a free to play, pay to win, cash grab model. And that was our objective ever from the beginning. Uh, was to really show that the community has been shrinking because we've had these types of games rammed down our throats yeah. and that's not what people want. Um, it's not that MMOs are dying, it's that the, the monetization scheme is dying. So. But that's it for this video, guys. As always, do let me know your thoughts about what's going on with Ashes of Creation in the comments below. Additionally, I do recommend checking out their PAX live stream on their Twitch VODs yourself. It was quite an enjoyable watch. But thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you again really soon.